<coughs> Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Among men, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural man does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge God everything that is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord. And let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are fallen, and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways.
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught there on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, our gospel today from St. Luke gives us a very vivid description of one of the many instances in sacred scripture where we see that Jesus casts out demons. And of course, today's gospel comes to us from St. Luke. And Luke reminds us, uh, as he does so many times in his Gospels, that Jesus is that divine physician. But Luke very carefully shows us that there are multiple dimensions to our human frailty and multiple ways in which humankind can become ill, infirmed, or we might say sick. And we often think of that, I think probably first most from physical dimensions of illness, but certainly I think in more modern era, we've come to a greater not only understanding, but a great empathy for the variety of ways in which emotionally and mentally there can be a, a lot of illness that can afflict people. But I think sometimes we still, even for the most devout of us, don't often think of illness in regards to spiritual illness. Uh, but that's exactly a dimension of what Jesus is trying to show us today. And St. Luke particularly is giving us another facet of how he is that divine physician, healing not just the body, not just the mind, but also the soul. And of course, we see this classic lineup today between good and evil, this man who is afflicted and who is afflicted not by simply a physical or mental disease, but afflicted by evil, by Satan himself afflicted and possessed by a demon. And of course we see this classic battle engaged. And we see without any doubt, St. Luke makes it very clear, almost effortlessly, Jesus expels the demon, and the demon not only bows to Christ, recognizing his divinity, but demonstrating that goodness always overcomes evil, that God always conquers Satan. And that indeed, if we place our hands and our life into God's, we are safe and protected. And it's interesting, Luke makes it very clear that the demon comes out without harming the man. A com complete, not only submission to the Lord, but ultimately that exorcism, we might call it, or the casting out of the demon, uh, has no lasting physical uh, effects on the man. And so there is complete triumph here. And of course, when we think about that, again, you know, when we think about especially these times now when we're coming through the coronavirus and we're looking for vaccines and we're certainly always, it just amazes me every day, the medical advances we make, particularly in the areas of cardiovascular and cancer oncology, just amazing. Just even in what, sometimes five and 10 years, the difference. And you've, I'm sure, seen it, especially if you've worked in the healthcare field, you've probably seen it if you've dealt with family members who been afflicted, and it's just amazing to me, even in the time of my priesthood, uh, from the beginning of the time I was ordained, when people who would visit and do pastoral care could sit, the advances that occurred, and people would get diagnoses 28, 30 years ago, uh, compared to where they are today. And in all of this, our focus so many times goes on and under 
understands that it's advances in healing. But my dear brothers and sisters, dare I say, with all of the advances in both physical, emotional, and psychological health, have we advanced in regards to spiritual health? <laughs> I think probably if we were to look at a study, we would probably say, just as we've gone in one direction when it comes to the corporeal nature of humanity, when it comes to the spiritual dimension, we're probably, I would tend to think, going in a fast graph down. And I think it's because sometimes people have a great dichotomy where they don't even think about their spiritual health. And that's dangerous, and it can be destructive. And our Lord is reminding us today, and I think particularly, we so often think when we hear these Gospels, oh, those are things that happened 2,000 years ago, you know, the devil doesn't. You know, that was epilepsy, or that was some kind of physical malady, or, you know, science has explained all that away. <laughs> As you know, we had Father Zeta here and others. Uh, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I can tell you a lot of the work that I do with the Chancery. It is increasing. Unbelievable. So much so that Vatican's getting ready to issue some new guidelines because it's just overwhelming worldwide. The cases that are coming in of oppression and, uh, and, and, and the influence of evil uh, documented. And I think it should be no surprise because if we turn away from God, if we turn away, and I say this as Catholics, we we don't get this sometimes, especially our younger people, probably because there's been a great failure in catechesis and in modeling the faith. But if we stay away from the sacraments, the sacraments are our medicine. Nothing will replace it. You know, we can go take a walk on a hill, we can say, I'm spiritual, uh, I'm a good person, I work at the food bank. Those are all wonderful things. But if we don't have the sacraments, they are the medicine against especially the Eucharist, is a powerful, powerful remedy against sin and against evil. And it's exactly what the devil wants. Keep us away from the Eucharist, uh, keep people separate from not being able to experience the Eucharist in whatever way that may be, uh, limiting the number of masses, clergy, whatever it might be. It's a way in which, you know, we don't want the medicine to be present because it indeed can not only help us and save us and cure us, but it keeps that evil away. And the sacrament of penance, think about it. There is no more powerful medicine against sin than the sacrament of penance. And yet, do we use it? Do we avail ourselves to it? And therefore, you know, it's almost like you hear the stories today how some of these diseases that we thought were completely eradicated, uh, like polio and that, have all of a sudden, because of the lack of vaccinations, often are starting to make this surge back. You know, I'd ask you just to contemplate that from a spiritual point of view. You know, in many ways, the sacraments are like our vaccines against sin, against evil, and, and also help us, you know, like vitamins, so to speak, if I would make an analogy not to, to, to demean the sacraments, but, you know, they, they, they help us and fortify us and strengthen us to be more holy. So if we separate ourselves from that, is there any question there's more opportunity for us to be influenced by the world, by sin? You know, dare I say, the world is like the old, uh, what do they used to call them, uh, you know, oil uh, people who go around and sell all the different things, you know, uh, that were like sort of gimmicks. That's what the world does. It rings its bell and it says, you know, like probably like some of the infomercials we see today, it takes a teaspoon of this and, you know, you'll, your hair will grow back, your eyes will never dim, and you'll appear better than you ever did. Yeah, we find out it's all the oil with a little bit of vitamin D or something. Yeah, but snake oil, that's the word I'm the snake oil salesman. See, it's, it's, I told someone the other day, and it takes me a while, but it comes. They say, give it a couple more years, it won't come. Uh, but, but when we think about that, you know, that's what the world offers, the snake oil. And the church offers something much more, a great treasure that we have. And so as we reflect on this gospel today, let's ask the Lord to help us so that we may not only avoid evil and then our sinfulness and our frailty and our humanness um, reconcile ourselves to God. But let's remind ourselves that indeed God always overcomes Satan. Good always conquers evil. But we have to embrace the good we have to embrace God. We have to use what he avails for us today. And when we think about it, what Christ is showing us in that act is how he comes as the incarnate Son of God to heal us, 
strengthen us to reconcile us. And what we believe as Catholics is that the sign of Christ, that grace of Christ, is perpetuated not by his physical presence now, but by the promise that he has given us through the sacramental life of the church. And in that sacramental encounter with the risen Christ, we receive the same effects as if Christ were standing next to us. That's what we believe. Uh, so let us ask the Lord to stay close to us and let us stay close to the Lord so that we may indeed overcome not just the maladies of body and mind, but the body, the maladies of the soul as well. Let us continue as we turn to the Lord today. And having received this Holy Spirit, let us now bring our petitions before the Father. <laughs> Let us pray that bishops, priests, and deacons may receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their ministry of preaching. Let us pray to the Lord. Yes, yes. Lord. That political leaders in every nation may be led by God's justice and mercy as they serve the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear yes, us, Lord. That God may relieve and grant assistance to all who are suffering from the physical, practical, financial effects of sickness and ill health. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord. For the, that the Holy Spirit may increase the gifts of understanding and wisdom in this community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all those who hold in the silence of our hearts and bring today before the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord. For Frank Nemchik, for whom we offer Mass today, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that they who have died in the light of Christ may now rest in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord. Father, hear the prayers we offer this day, and answer them according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God. The Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks through Christ our Lord. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 
God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant of your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become the living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, before by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, 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 who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.